Right, what's the first two dishes that come to mind when I say Italian food? Pizza, pizza and pasta. Yeah? <laughs> pizza and pasta. Yeah? Quintessentially Italian. Guys, today your challenge is to cook pizza and pasta. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Are you ready to run a restaurant in Rome? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The pizza pasta challenge begins now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mamma mia! This challenge is gonna be tough. And my pizza today is a quattro formaggi, a four cheese pizza. It's great to see that I came up with a good idea and yeah, slapped it straight up on the board. When I walk into the kitchen, or should I say kitchenette, I am mildly concerned about whether we're actually all going to be able to work within this space or fit within this space. Sorry. Wrong time to walk past, Alice. It's really small. It's really, really small. Kitchenette. The dough is taking us much longer to make than we anticipated and everyone's running behind. The pizza-based situation is out of control. It's too tough. Yeah, OK. We've got a full lunch service, 120 people to feed. We're running out of time. Check on. Two quattro formaggio, yep. one napolitano, and a casarecci, yeah? I realise that both my pizza and my pasta are going to be popular, and they're coming in at the same time. I start making the pasta and put the pizza out of my mind. This is the bit that counts in terms of communication, right? Because you don't want to stitch each other up, yeah? Yes, chef. Because prep was so frantic, I didn't actually have time to make my own pizza sauce. Can't you just use some of her sauce? I can, but it's not mine. Just use it, that's fine. I'm going to have to steal some of Julia's in the hope that I might be able to sort of make some more. Come on, guys, we can do this. Keep it up. I need an orecchietti rigatoni. Yes. Give me something to send it, please. Hey, come on, give it to me. Come on. Yes, chef. Use a spoon. Where's the pizza? The pizza's not started. I've... The pizza's not started. George is ballistic. He is absolutely hammering Alice at the moment. She's not keeping up and he is losing it. Alice? Alice! 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 Why wouldn't you say something? Yes, George, I'm sorry, Why wouldn't guys. you say something? I, I, the I, I, pizza's going. going with these two Arakini. Get it made, come on. Someone help her now. I am. Come on, guys, nearly there. Nearly there. Yes, Chef. Alice's pizza, the, the four cheese pizza. You know, I like that. Let's have a toast. Thumbs up. Oh, yeah, I think that's great. Flavours and the cheese shine through, and then that's what a, a four cheese pizza should be all about. So I think she's that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good job. Service two two three, yeah. Come on, guys, we can do this. Keep it up. Right, two two eight to finish. Rosola. Right, guys, two dockets left, and that means service will be over, yeah. Here. Right, guys, come Yay! forward. Well done. Massive service, yeah? Basically four kitchens in one, okay? Huge, yeah? Can I, let's not kid ourselves, it was one of the toughest. Uh, yeah, you've all felt it. But can I tell you, brilliant job. You didn't give up, you kept going. Well done. Well done. You okay? Yeah. <laughs> Big. That was massive. Good work. He, Good was it because I was there that he was writing me? <laughs> no, you did really well. You did really well. I had George on my tail for the entire service, and it was good because it kept me going. And I think if I can get through that service, I can get through anything. 
Alice, it was the pizza. Uh -huh. That quattro fromage, absolutely superb. Lovely choice of cheeses, great base, well cooked, good job. <laughs> wow. Oh, that looks so good. Oh, yes, man. I, I love it. You walk in and your, your eye is drawn to the thing that inspires this whole masterclass, and it's cheese. I'm going to do two different versions of mac and cheese. One is vegetarian mac and cheese. The other one is non-vegetarian. What could be more familiar than that simple combination of macaroni or a pasta in a cheese sauce? And there are literally countless ways that you can customise that to put your own spin on it. So, our water is bubbling enthusiastically away. We've got it seasoned. We're going to throw in our pasta. And then we're going to do this. This is a really simple trick. Lots of people use um, oil in their pasta. What I do to stop it sticking is cold water. So what you do by pouring in cold water and giving the pasta a stir is you reset the starch on the outside and so it doesn't stick. And then what we're going to do is just bring it back to the boil. Um, this pasta is going to take maybe four minutes to get to the point we want. Normally, the rule is two to three minutes less than it says on the packet. While those pastas are cooking, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fry up some shallots. We're just going to cook those till they soften and go translucent. In with this 200 grams of pasta here, we're going to put about 500 grams, 600 grams of cauliflower florets, and they're going to finish off cooking with the pasta. That's, they're going to take about two minutes. OK, that, those shallots are starting to soften. So in with our butter, stir it. 20 grams of butter, and then we're going to add a tablespoon and a half of flour. We're just going to stir it. Can you start seeing? That's lovely. Look at that combo there. Now, we just want to toast that floury combo up. It's starting to go a bit brown. Um, one and a half cups of milk is how much we're going to add, and it's going to mix this in. Don't go fast. Just take it. Keep toasting and cooking that flour, cooking out the flavour on there. A little bit more. If you put all the milk in at once and try and mix it, it'll end up lumpy. We're going to do our non-vegetarian mac and cheese here. I've got double quantity of bechamel in this bowl. And into that bechamel, I'm going to put our pasta, the macaroni, I'm also going to throw in with that cheese sauce. Celery and onions are fried up together. I then fry the corn and the bacon in a pan. Frozen corn, diced bacon, a little bit of brown sugar to help the caramelization, and smoky paprika. It's smoked bacon, but the smoky paprika is going to give us even more flavor. So there's your smoky corn, bacon, macaroni cheese. Over here, we'll finish off this white sauce, which will turn into a cheese sauce with the addition of cheese. 100 grams of bitey cheddar in there. Stir it. And what's going to happen is that cheese will melt down into the sauce. And that's, that's a half serve of what we had in this pot here. Right, so we've got our non-vegetarian smoky corn and bacon mac and cheese. We're just going to pour that into a greased baking tray. So, on top, I've saved some of our corn and bacon mixture because, again, pretty is good. So, more of that corn and bacon mixture. A little bit of parmesan. Some panko bread comes because you want that crunch. And maybe just a little bit of extra cheddar because why not? And then that's going to go into a 200 degree oven, 180 fan forced until it's golden on top. Um, so, a vegetarian mac and cheese. So, I've put the cheese sauce through the pasta with the cauliflower, collision of two great classic winter comfort food dishes cauliflower cheese, mac and cheese. I'm now adding some pickled jalapenos. Just straight, you know, you can pickle them yourself. That, that'd be the cool thing to do. You could um, just buy them in a jar and chop them up. And then, 
We're going to put that mac and cheese into our greased baking tin. A little bit of pepper, a little bit of seasoning, and then some more jalapenos. Go. Um, I've roughly chopped up bread with parsley, parmesan, and olive oil. And that's going to be our topping on top of there. Because that parsley goes so beautifully with the jalapeno. Obviously, the fact it's got oil in it means it's going to toast. But it's also going into the oven till it's golden. So, after time and the magic of television, Amazing. <laughs> so this is my vegetarian cauliflower jalapeno mac and cheese. Wow, yum. And it's my non-vegetarian mac and cheese with smoky corn, bacon, bit of, bit of healthy celery in there somewhere amongst the cheese, all right? So two very simple ways of making mac and cheese, something a little bit twisted, but still totally delicious and perfect for a cold winter's evening. Daniel, thank you so much for developing this dish, especially for MasterChef. How hard is this dish? And how long did it take you to develop and perfect it? Uh, it took me about a week to get it right. Yeah, there's a lot of components to it. Daniel, please reveal the dish. This is my maple glazed bacon dog. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and there it is, a hot dog in a bun. What can be so hard? Daniel, run through what components are in this hot dog. OK, well, first off, the bun is a smoked pork fat brioche. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> um, the sausage is a veal and pork sausage with diced Kaiserfleisch, or bacon through it, which has been glazed with maple syrup. Underneath, there is a cucumber pickle. There is roasted pork crackling. The components of this hot dog go on and on and on. <laughs> Beads of sweat start to form on my brow. And then on top, there is a Comte Gruyere and Dijon mustard sauce and a quince and tomato relish. Do we have a day? <laughs> <laughs> a hot dog is never a hot dog on MasterChef. Your two hours starts now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Go, go, go. Our two hours start, and the first thing I need to do is get the brioche done. It takes a long time for the brioche to prove. It needs to be proven twice and then cooked in the oven. Oh, no. This is not a typical brioche. This is a smoked pork fat brioche. You put yeast, flour, smoked pork fat, and butter into the mixer. The brioche dough is ready to go. When it's been mixed through, it's nice and soft. It needs to sit in the oven at 35 degrees for about 10 to 20 minutes so that it can rise. How deep should I go? Is that too deep? No, that's good. And just straight lines here? Yeah? Yep, that's it, perfect. This one here, you just want to take the skin off and yeah. then dice it into kind of so matchstick size dice, pieces. Dice that one? Yep. OK. The next thing I need to do is to heat the Kaiser flesh into the pan and render all the fat down. Then you add the maple syrup to it, transfer that mixture onto a baking paper into the fridge to cool it down. Little means pork, means pork, back fat, brandy. Now, to make the sausage mixture, you get all the ingredients. The pork means the veal means the spices, the curing salt, into the uh, mixing bowl, and you mix it through until everything is incorporated. At that point, you take out the cooled down Kaiser Flash and maple syrup mixture, add it to the mixing bowl, and that needs to go into the fridge again to cool down. So for the tomato and quince relish, the quince needs to be poached in sugar, water, and spice mixture. That needs to be poaching for 30 minutes or so. Now this is going to be the test of a lifetime. 
With 50 minutes to go, I need to get onto my sausages. I haven't made any sausages before in a sausage maker. I've seen how to do it, and it seems pretty easy, but nothing in this kitchen is easy. Under pressure, nothing is easy. Just over 10 minutes to go, and I'm pureeing my sauce. I've got my mustard sauce ready. I've got my relish ready. The crackling has to be crushed. The buns are coming out of the oven. The sausages need to be browned, and everything seems to be coming together now. Disappointment? No, no, no. Deliciousness? Yes, yes, yes. 10 minutes to go. Go on, go on, 10 minutes! 10 seconds to go. Ten. They're counting down. All I can do is put them in Eight, little containers and put seven, them on a plate. Six, five, four, three, two, one. That's it. Time's up. Rishi. Oh, Rishi. <laughs> Are you happy with what you put in front of us? 95%, yes. <laughs> right, let, let's see if you are 95% there. I'll tell you what, it looks the business. Because that looks like a proper hot dog. All the elements are there so that the thing has some balance to it. The creaminess is important to balance the acidity of the pickle and the acidity of the tomato sauce. Sausage, great, great colour on the bun, great colour on the sausage. It's the one I would eat from start to finish. Yeah. Rishi, great job. Thank you. Great job, Rishi. Well done. Good job, Rishi. In seven years, we can count on one hand the number of great attempts that we've seen in this kitchen of this dish. It's tripped up many, many great contestants. I immediately think risotto. I know that's the MasterChef death dish. Today, to save yourself, you need to best that most innocent of looking foes, the pie. Oh, OK. I'm kind of nervous and excited. I've made pies before, and I think this might be a challenge that kind of plays to my strengths. The thing that I'm just freaking out right now about is pastry. When you're under pressure and you have to think on your feet and there's so many variables in the environment that you're in, pastry is not the thing you want to be making. Are you ready? Your time starts now. <laughs> We have 90 minutes to cook a pie, and if mine is the worst today, I'm going home. You want to say celery? You think, yeah, a pie, it's simple. But until you understand how pastry works and all the things that go wrong, then you realise that 90 minutes to make a pie is a massive ask. Today, the goal is all about avoiding elimination. You know, um, there's three other really strong cooks looking down the bench. Um, it's going to be a tough day, but I don't want to go home just yet. Today I'm making a, a beef, red wine and pepperberry pie. I know that the critical thing about the pie is going to be getting the, the pastry right, um, and I want to make sure that I focus on that to start with. I'm reasonably confident we're cooking pastry, but this is going to be really tight for time today. 90 minutes seems like a long time, but to make a pie, you've got to make that, that pastry shell, you've got to rest it, you've got to blind bake it, you've got to bake it with the filling, you've got to make the filling. It's a couple of things that I'm, that I'm sort of trying to aim for here. One is to make sure that the pastry is, is cooked through and, uh, you know, yeah, just make sure that it's nice and crisp and golden. But I need to make sure that uh, I do everything that I can to stay here. My short crust pastry is looking good. I need to get it into the fridge to let it rest. Lots of positive ways, guys. Pastry's looking good. Uh, I'm just going to roll it out, let it rest a little bit more. I grab some pie tins, roll out the pastry, and put them in the tins. 
Oh, are you, are you doing, you're doing two different versions of the same pipe? I, I'm just making two so that I've got one kind of test. You're going to swoop down on this this challenge and bring us something delicious. I'm, I'm certainly hoping so, man. And, and, and your pastry is looking good. Yes. You're going to bring some pie that's going to make us go wow. I certainly hope so. All we want is premiership pie. <laughs> I take my pastry out of the fridge after it's rested and it's really crumbly. I've now put water in it, but I don't know if it's going to stay together. Pastry is like 80% of this challenge. If there's no pastry, it's not a pie. It's not perfect, but I think it might just be workable enough. As long as you think it'll hold together, it's nice and malleable now. All right, the task is simple. Bring us a delicious pie. 45 minutes down, 45 minutes to go. Come on. Come on, guys. Come on, man. I grab my pie tins from the fridge. The pastry's been resting in there, but I need to blind bake them now. That pastry needs to be cooked through before I put the filling in, otherwise it'll be soggy. With 40 minutes to go, um, and I'm just trying to uh, get everything together. My beef is nearly cooked. Um, my tart shells are, are blind baking at the moment. Um, it's gonna be, I'm really gonna be pushing it for time here. With 30 minutes, I'm really pushing it for time, and I'm taking those pie shells out of the oven. They've cooked through beautifully, and I'm putting the filling in there. Come on, Matt. I need to give it an egg wash just to make sure that that pastry comes up nice and golden and brown. Hey, that looks all right, doesn't it? Really pushing it to make sure that that top pastry is cooked all the way through and nice and golden brown. I just hope it's enough. Are you happy with it? Is it delish? I, I think it's delish. Yeah. I just need to get one. <laughs> Let's go, Sarah. I'm making a chicken sweet corn filling. You need your pies filled in the next eight minutes, OK? Yep. In the oven. I'm really, really worried about the pastry. I take my pies out of the oven. They're so flaky. Even the edges are just breaking off and they're all sitting at the bottom of the oven. I've, like, made shortbread. Ugh. Disaster. This is worse than any pastry I've ever made before. Could I be in more of a worse position? Probably not. Come on, Jess. Come on, Rose. Their pies need to go in the oven. Matthew's sweet. They're in. Done. He's just looking at the door. I would like to taste belongs to Matthew. Thanks, guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're going to have to share oh, that. Oh, I'm Share what? <laughs> I'm not sharing anything. That looks. That looks absolutely amazing. Thank you. I am so excited about this pie. Are I'm you? speechless. No, no, that's fantastic. Mm. Yeah, you could put that on a cover of a magazine. Absolutely right. I don't know about putting it in a cover of a magazine. I'd put it in a big brown paper bag. And put it in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you could just see Gary sitting at the footy, okay. yeah. watching, oh, watching, his, uh, so happy. watching his team lose, lose. obviously. And, um, and, and eating one of them. Smash it. What is it? It's, so it's uh, beef, red wine and uh, pepper berry with bacon and mushrooms. Nice. It sounds good. Oh, no, that's so good. How good's that? Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Mate. 
That's mm. mighty fine pie. Yum. <laughs> you, I'm gonna eat all of this. So just <laughs> make yourselves comfy. <laughs> this is absolutely delicious. And quite frankly, we should call you the Pied Piper, because you're the one everyone has got to follow. Often with pies, we love the filling, it's delicious. Um, the great thing about this pie is the filling is delicious and bacon is wonderful, the, the, the meat's beautifully cooked, but the pastry yeah. is the thing you really love. And to make a pie where the pastry is the hero, not the filling, that's truly great pie making. It's the best pie I've ever eaten on this show. Wow. In seven years, well done. Thank you. <laughs> Tell me he's not safe. What, he's safe? Yeah, of course he's safe. Go upstairs, go Up you go. Really? Go yeah, that's yeah, amazing. Right. No, right. Thank you. <laughs> Don't need lunch now. <laughs>